Shalom. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a subject that is very touchy and most churches uh, don't even want to talk about it even in the message of the hour because it's got so many things that are entangled in it. But I believe it is very important, vital important uh, to discuss uh, issues on marriage and divorce. <clears throat> many of us uh, have not even read the scriptures that pertain to that. So I, my interest in this is that because I've just, uh, well, the last year become uh, <clears throat> a widower. So I was just looking at my options and the best way to do that is to, to go into the Bible, not to speak to anybody else, you know, or to go to what you call the, your prophet. Uh, in this case, I consulted with uh, what I believe to be the prophet of this hour, Brother Bunny, what he said <clears throat> about situations like that. And then when I was doing that research, I also discovered a lot of anomalies that are happening in marriages today. So it is a touchy issue, but uh, it is of vital importance because if you, um, what is the reason that you are a Christian? If the reason for you becoming a Christian is none other than going to heaven, then this video will not help you. You might as well stop now. But if it is, your reason for being a Christian is to go to heaven and you must always use the blueprint of the Bible <clears throat> to make sure that your satnav, your heavenly satnav uh, navigation is in sync with the heavens. So having looked at that, I decided to, to, to look at marriage and divorce and see how it affects us today and the way uh, most churches are behaving today which is outside the remit of the Bible and so forth. So I'm going to share a screen now uh, of the little small, you know, pity that I have done so I can share a few things with you. So let's start by the, the scriptures. What do the scriptures say? And when you want to see what marriage and divorce is all about, you always go to Matthew 19, because this is where the Lord Jesus Christ was asked by the Pharisees why people could not uh, continue as they were advised by Moses to do when they were in the wilderness. We'll start at verse four. And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that they which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And for this, as for this cause shall a man leave the father and mother and shall cleave his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. That answers a lot of questions there. <clears throat> For this call shall a man, not the woman, leave his father and mother. I've seen on Facebook people saying, oh, who do you greet first, your mother or your wife? Your wife, because you've left your father and mother, and you shall cleave to your wife. So if you are a husband, and when there's an argument between your wife and your mother, you take your mother's side, then you don't know the Bible. Your wife is part of you. Your mother is not part and parcel of who you are. She's part of, of your husband. Because remember, your wife, according to the Bible, is supposed to be your rib. So how can you attach yourself to another rib, which would be your mother? Nothing wrong with the mother. But when you leave, <clears throat> it is all about these two people building. And successful marriages are the problem. They come from people who always support or take their hands off uh, other people's marriages and only support. And pastors are also to blame in this. I've seen many times uh, people have an argument. Instead of opening the Bible or the, the message to see what Brother Branham says about it, what do they do? They run to the pastor. If I was married to a woman or a, a husband who always runs to the pastor, I'll take him one day <coughs> to the pastor and say, Pastor, here is your wife, here is your husband. Because it shows a lack of maturity. Because when you are a truly converted Christian, you are supposed to be guided by the Holy Ghost, not the pastor. When he, the Holy Ghost, shall come, he will show you all the truth, not when he, the pastor, has come. So if you don't know some of these things that are already there in the Bible to guide you, that's why you're always rushing to your pastor or prophet, whatever it is. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but they are one. 
So when you are married, you are one, one flesh. And whatever, therefore, what God has joined together, let not men put asunder. So that is the basis of what marriage is from the beginning. Because you'll see that Jesus says from the beginning. So at the beginning, there was two covenants. The first covenant before the fall was that a man and a woman were co-equal. And then when you get to Genesis 3, after the fall, then there was another second covenant where the men, because remember, it was the wife who sinned, not the husband. But the husband chose, because they were one flesh, although she had done wrong, the husband, which was Adam, said, look, I'm willing to overlook what my wife has done and go with her. Because Adam could have said, well, can you give me another wife? But he realized that it was born of his bone, flesh of his flesh. And so he decided to stay. So that's why there was a new covenant that was given by the Lord. You can read that in Genesis 3. I'm not going to be touching uh, all of this uh, today because I try to make this as uh, simple and as short as possible. So you see, when you go it's to verse 9, and I say unto you, whoever shall put away his wife except for fornication, there's another problem there. Fornication in its original definition, even in English, it means sex before marriage. So when you're getting married to a girl, even if she has fornicated, but if you forgive her and she has confessed it to you, then that is okay. But if a woman comes, gets married to a man for 100 years or whatever, and he finds out after 100 years, he is able to divorce her because she lied, because that is one of the things that you can put away a wife for is fornication. And fornication is sex before marriage, and shall marry another. So you are allowed if that has happened. But if you know beforehand, if it is confessed to you, then you forgive it, like what Adam did, then everything is all right. So if you don't do it that way, like most churches now, they divorce even their pastors, they divorce and remarry. You are living in an adultery, like he says in nine, they committed adultery, and whosoever marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. So if you marry a divorced woman, you are living in adultery according to the word of the living God. It's things that have not been taught in churches, because most churches, they are monetary, sort of uh, looking at how much money they're making. It's a money-making scheme. So they don't want to preach anything that will make people stop coming from church because they are looking at the dollar amount and nothing else. And even the disciples in verse 11, they said, oh, all men cannot receive this saying, save for they whom it was as given. So the, even the disciples were saying, hey, so it's not good to marry because it was too much. But Jesus says immediately, but I said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. <clears throat> save they to whom it is given. So you may not accept or receive what I'm saying today according to the scriptures. That's fine. Disagreement is not a, you know, a bad thing. That's the problem with the political world. They do not accept uh, differences. <clears throat> but in Christianity, we accept differences because you can't force someone to believe a certain way. It has to be revealed to you, and God reveals it by revelation. So there are two schools of thought. The first one is Calvinism. Those people who say once in grace, you're in grace, so you can go drink and uh, commit adultery and all this, you're in grace. They are wrong. Although there is grace through predestination. But when the Holy Ghost comes into you, that grace does not become disgrace because you always walk right. You walk according to the Bible. And the Armenianism, the legalist, is all about the law. They are wrong too. So the truth is always in the middle of anything. If you're looking for the truth, that's why the Bible says in Isaiah, there is a way, a highway, which is a huge highway. Everybody you know, professing to be a Christian is walking. But within that highway, there is a way that is in the middle. 
that is those who are saved. Everybody on the highway is not going to be saved, but the ones who are in the middle of the, who are in the way. And what is the way? Is I say that I am the way, the truth, and the light. So that's what the difference is. So if we go and look at other scriptures like uh, Leviticus 21, 7, Ezekiel 44, 22, it also talks about, you know, things that people don't really know. A preacher can never, or a minister of the gospel, marry a widow. Unless, of course, if that widow was married to another preacher. But today, what has happened, everything is all mixed up. Ministers marry widows. They even chase people from church to marry uh, uh, the divorced wives and connive to kill a husband so they can marry the, the, the woman. That is wrong. So you can read that in Leviticus 21.7 and Ezekiel 44.22. And another scripture that you might want to look at is uh, Matthew 5.32. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, that is to divorce your wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry that divorced woman, committed adultery. So if a wife is divorced, she cannot remarry. That's why Paul says in Corinthians, she has to stay single. We'll see in the first Corinthians chapter seven, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. So if you can, divorce is the worst thing that you can do. It's not allowed, but in certain circumstances, it is allowable, as you will see as we are reading. Verse 13, and the woman wisheth an husband that believeth not, and if he is pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So if it's okay for you to go to church and do whatever you want to do, you don't leave that husband or wife. But for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by what? By the wife. You might be able to convert your wife but to, or your husband, but it's not always possible. But if the unbelieving depart, so it means the one who is not a Christian, say if you've made a mistake in your marriage, the one who does not believe is the one who should say, I'm going, not you saying, I'm, I'm going. Depart, let him depart. A brother, a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us unto peace. So if your wife, husband says they want to leave. You are not under obligation to beg them to stay. Because remember, when you're living with someone who doesn't believe the way you believe, it's always a struggle. And you're always uh, under siege, as it were, because you have different absolutes. That's why I've always said in the other videos, you must always marry within your church, within your belief, within your absolute, so that when you have a problem, instead of rushing to the pastor all the time, you open that absolute and say, oh, what does the absolute say? If the Bible is your absolute, you open the Bible. If uh, the Quran is your absolute, you open the Quran and see what does it say and follow that. So that is, in a nutshell, what is a uh, marriage and divorce. So many people, many churches today, they are living in adultery because they failed to understand or to receive that which the Bible has given us. We're lucky in this day to have a brother Branham, who I believe to be the prophet of this hour. You are entitled to have your own prophets and so forth. But how do you judge a prophet? If you have a prophet, watch how they behave towards money women and popularity and also you must take the character of your prophet and compare it with other prophets that are in the bible do they meet the criteria that is set in the bible i'm not going to force you to say brother Branham is the prophet but i believe he's a prophet so for some of you now <clears throat> i have put you on a ledge you're thinking all right i've made a mistake what do i do I believe that we were given, uh, given a reprieve in a message called Marriage and Divorce, uh, preached by Brother Brennan in 1965. It gives you an answer on how you should go about it. 
But if they are believing, leave, you are not under bondage to do that. But when they leave, you are not allowed to remarry until they die. Because the vow is until death do us part. But many so-called Christians today, they marry and remarry like uh, <coughs> people do in Hollywood. We are not Hollywood. We are going to heaven. We are having the material, so we should live by the uh, within the confines of the Bible itself. I hope this has been helpful to you, and uh, hopefully the Lord will bless you in whatever you're doing and to guide you, because all we are looking for is to go home to heaven. And if it can help one person, that is good enough. It can help a lot, that's even better, because that's what we are here for, to hold each other's hands as we walk towards our heavenly home. Shalom. God bless you.